Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children 18 plus, you are tuned in to the Loan Officer Podcast with me, Dustin Owen, and a very special guest. This dude grew up one city away from me, but we just met today. He is a 20-year real estate professional. He has over 1,300 real estate agents in his downline. He is single-handedly changing the real estate game agent by agent, coaching session by coaching session. He is the one, the only Coach Bobby franchise. Bobby, thank you for taking the time to stop by the Lone Officer Podcast. Absolutely, man. I can't believe we haven't met. I know. Isn't that crazy? We actually played football against each other yep. at some point, high school teams, but didn't know each other. Know some of the same people because we went to rival high schools. But we get to meet officially for the first time today. Yeah, absolutely. And, and from what I've heard from you, man, you were probably a partier back in the day. So we were probably at some uh, Lyman parties or some Lake Mary parties. Together. There's a good <laughs> chance if if you like, you know, I'd like to say I was a social person. Right. And as a social person. Social. Person. Yes, I couldn't. You wouldn't find me at home playing video games. You would find me out and out. about. Yes. Yes. Yeah. No. Um, and here's a really cool story for those tuning in. Bobby and I were at the same event where uh, he was asked kind of impromptu to kind of close out the event. I was there because we were sponsoring it. So as a sponsor, they asked you to get there early, speak on stage. I kind of always hate that. Like even when, when I do events, I try to tell my sponsors, like, can I, can I pitch you from the stage? Right. Uh, Cause my normal spiel as a sponsor is I'm like, look, no one came here to listen to me speak. Yep. So for that reason, all I'm going to say is enjoy yourself and thank you. And by the way, if one of my people ever call you, say yes to a meeting. That's how you can say thank you for us sponsoring today. And I and I hop off. But no, you were put on the spot because you were asked to come up. And you are asked to come up. And I guess the host had must have heard this before. And hey, this dude spit so much fire. I literally had to ask the guy next to me who was Jeff Velez. Hey, who is that dude? And he told me, I'm like, oh, I've heard of him. And I'm like, is he any good? And he's like, oh, he's really good. I'm like, all right, cool. I hit him up on, on IG, literally slid into his DM, said, hey, would you be interested? This is who I am. This is what we're doing. And you said yes. Absolutely. So Absolutely. thank you. And thank um, you, Jeff, uh, for, uh, for co-signing. Jeff Alex. Yeah, for yeah. co-signing. I like that. Thank you for co-signing. So, yeah, so you are a University of Florida graduate. Mm -hmm. And you graduated not in finance and not in real estate. No, I was actually an exercise and sports science major, um, you know, and it kind of goes back into my story, right? Because uh, a lot of 18 year olds have no clue what they want to do with their lives. And, that, and that's what we don't teach kids, right? We don't actually talk to them about the real world. You just say, you know, go play sports, do good in school and then go to college. And yeah. I was like, literally, I was like flipping through the book. Like, I guess I got a major in something because yeah. I have no idea what I want to do. And I was, and I, I don't know if you remember, but back in the day, there was a movie called Jerry Maguire. Yes. And it was really popular around that time. And I was like, look, I play sports like all my life, play football and all that. I was like, you know, maybe I should be a sports agent like Jerry Maguire. And I'm like, and the closest thing I found to that was a major called sports management. And it was in the College of Exercise and Sports Sciences or whatever the case may be. And literally, that's what I chose. And I've never done a thing with it since. Yeah, because you got into real estate almost instantaneously after graduating. Is that correct? Pretty much. Actually, you know, uh, it's funny because I was a great student. I did, I did everything right. You know, but when I looked around, all the people that told me to go to school and get a good job didn't look happy. Okay. And, and it didn't make sense to me. There was something wrong. And I was like, man, this equation doesn't. They're like, hey, money's not the most important thing. And they'd say all that kind of stuff. And I'm like, wait, you're spending 40, 50, 60 hours at a place you hate for what? For money, right? And I'm like, how do we fix this? So back then, nobody ever really, I never grew up with like an entrepreneurship type of environment, right? Mm -hmm. So nobody ever, uh, I just thought business was boring. Like I thought business was, you know, I was going to be this guy named Bob sitting in a cubicle and, you know, for 40 years. And I was like, I can't happen to me. So I literally worked at a nightclub. You would probably have gone to Roxy. I, I was there. Did you work at Roxy? <laughs> I did not work at Roxy. Okay. I worked from the very first day that Antigua opened up. Wow. You remember Antigua yes. back in the day? Yeah. So I literally was painting downtown the walls. Orlando, three stories, right? Yep. Yeah. I was I was painting the walls before we even opened up. And I actually did that for about a year just to try to figure things out. Um, the one thing I did do that was, I, I thought was a blessing is I had a friend that put me onto personal development Okay. and early, and, right early. He was, he would always be like, read these books. And I'm like, I don't know. Who's what, that what? friend by the way? Uh, his name is Ronell jump. Ronell, if you're out there, you remember Ronell, he actually, well, you might not remember him, but he, he played for Lake, Lake Mary as well. Okay. Yep. Um, but Ronell would be like, read these books. And I was like, well, I want to be read books, you know, cause like school had kind of killed my love for reading. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, so what I would do is, you know, on the nightclub, you work three, four nights a week and you got all this time during the week. So I'm like, what am I going to do? 
And I did two things. One, I started reading personal development books. And two, I joined a multi-level. Actually, back in the day, it was called Quickstar. It was an offshoot of Amway. Okay. And so I just really was like, how do I make money? How do I become financially free? Like uh, everything I'm reading in his books is the opposite of what people told me growing up. So the books opened your mind. hundred percent. Okay. hundred percent. I mean, I, when I coach and I speak and, you know, I say, look, you know, I can coach and speak on a lot of different things, but a lot of people are looking for a magic pill. Mm -hmm. And I tell them, I was like, if you do want a magic pill, it's become a personal development addict. It's the, it's the one thing that solves everything else. It's the one, if you can reprogram your mind, you can accomplish whatever you want. But if you leave the old programs in there, you're just going to end up in the same places. So if you become an addict to this, if you're like, you know, you're going to tell me a book recommendation. I'm like, dude, I want to, I want to read that. I want to listen to that. I want to hear from different perspectives and I want to hear from people who actually have the success that I want. So I know from reading your bio on LinkedIn, yeah. you're a big Tony Robbins guy. Yeah. Right. Was Tony Robbins one of the first personal no. development you were turned on to? No, actually not. It, you know, I never really got into him. You know, I, I'm the kind of person you ever have somebody like hype some shit up, like mm -hmm. really like and then and then you don't want it. Like they're like, oh, you just overhyped it for me. Yes. You know, what I mean? yeah, if it's if it's too popular. Right. I don't want it. Yeah, exactly. So I feel like that was Tony Robbins for me uh, for a while. You know, I heard of him. I heard of his books. I heard all that stuff. And but what happened was I, I felt like I hit like a ceiling like I, I was. You know, whenever you feel stagnant and you're like, man, what's next? And a friend of mine, she was like, you know, you would really love Tony Robbins. I'm like, you think? She's like, yeah, you got to go to one of his events. And I was like, I think you're right. Like, I think I need something different. I can't just read books. I got to be physically present and feel, you know, that kind of energy and stuff like that. So literally a week later, um, uh, my business partner, Gil Ramos, had brought in a Tony Robbins trainer just coincidentally to the office to sell us tickets for Unleash the Power Within. And I was like, this is a sign. Yeah. Like, I'm supposed to go to this event. And, you know, after I went to that event, I was like, oh, I get it. I get why this guy's been doing it for 40 years and crushing. Like, I get why presidents call him to coach. I get why celebrities call him to coach because he just gets it. He's actually, if, you know, like, it, you know, I know, I know you haven't heard much of him, but, you know, he reminds me of us. Like, yeah. he's just a real dude. He, he keeps it simple. He breaks down complex things. But at the end of the day, you know, it comes down to whatever stories we tell ourselves. And, and if we can, if we can figure out where we got our, are bad stories and make them into empowering stories. You can change everything. That's awesome. How did you get into real estate? Um, also by accident, I was working at that nightclub and uh, I met a guy at the gym and I was to the point where I was, I felt like I was getting dumber by the day. Like I was like, look, I'm literally. Cause you're a year removed from, by the way, University of Florida, for those that don't know, like it is one of the best public universities in the country. Right. So you obviously got a really good education and you had to be smart to get there, but you're telling me like, hey, a year of being probably a gym rat, being a club guy, doing club things. You're like, I'm getting dumber by the minute. Yes. But you meet a guy at the gym who introduces you to, to, the, to the mortgage business, actually. The so, mortgages? Yes. So, to my business. Yeah, to your okay. business. So it was funny because I was like, I was basically, um, I like to make big decisions around my birthday, which is in March. And I had been at the club for about a year. And I was like, look, if I can't find what's next by, by my birthday, I'm just going to quit. And then I'm going to figure it out because I need something. And literally in the next few weeks, I was at the gym. Uh, working out next to this guy and we start a conversation up and he says he's opening a branch of a mortgage company here in downtown Orlando. Um, and, uh, and I was like, man, that sounds really interesting. And he's like, uh, and he's like, you think you'd want to do mortgages? And I was like, so that's like a, like a loan on a home. Right. Yeah. And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, cause sure. this was like, it was like 0203 <laughs> at yeah. this standpoint. It was about 02. Yeah. So market was, was pretty decent, decent refis. Yep. Right. Coming off the recession of 2001 leading into the boom, right? right. The 04, 05, 06 yes. time period. Yep. Who, out of curiosity, who's that manager? Uh, well, he, yeah, I'll, you won't know him because uh, he well, didn't spend, you wouldn't know him, but, okay. anybody, but I'll, I'll shout out Terry, Terry Whitmer, if you're out there somewhere, uh, okay. big shout out, but he was the one that got me in the game. Yeah. Um, but then uh, very shortly after that, I went to a company called Approved Lending uh, and uh, the president of that company was a guy named Richard Shilton who I ended up actually partnering with and opening up a mortgage company with a no few way. years later. I didn't yeah. know that at all. Yep. So you went mortgage first. Mortgage first. And then parlayed your mortgage experience into selling real estate. Correct. Okay. Correct. And investing as well. And, and investing. Yep. And are you now still an active investor? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. I, I really love commercial. And um, so uh, past six years, I bought some pretty... Uh, you know, a couple of nice commercial properties, but this year I really want to go after it. I think that, you know, with the shift that's happening in the market, I think you're going to see a lot of opportunities in that in every space coming, coming into real estate. But I think a lot of people are scared of commercial or they don't understand it. And I just think that, you know, I'd rather get, you know, you can buy 10 residential properties and get, you know, 500 bucks a month 
net on each one and deal with 15 ACs, 15 problems, mm-hmm. 15 tenants, or you could buy one building and get 15 grand a month. Yeah, you know, you know, you know some. I mean, I, yes, I pick <laughs> up what you're putting down. The way it was best explained to me is there's a friend of mine that goes, Dio, all we're doing is moving a comma. That's it. Right. So, like, you can go buy a $300,000 house and put $50,000 of added value as a terminology, boys and girls, that we use in the mm-hmm. investing space, and then either rent it or resell it. Right. Or you could buy a $3 million property, put $500,000. All we're doing is moving commas. The difference is what you just said, instead of receiving 500 bucks a month in rent, I'm I'm receiving $5,000 a month in rent. Exactly. Or instead of me making a $30,000 profit when I flip this, it's a $300,000 profit. Right. The biggest obstacle or hurdle I have found is the mindset. Right. It's people being able to stomach, oh my God, 300 grand is a lot of money. I'm like, no, it's not when you compare it to $3 million. That's right. 300 grand is a lot of money when you compare it to 30,000. Sure. You know, and yes, a $3 million purchase is a huge purchase compared to 300,000, but it's a tiny purchase when compared to 30 million. Exactly. It's just a matter of changing that mindset. And I had a friend help me change that mindset. So you've been, you used to lend money for home purchases. Then you started selling homes. Correct. Then you started purchasing real estate for investment purposes. Correct. Now do you do all three or you just do two of the three? Like what does the day in the life of Coach Bobby franchise look like today in 2023? Yeah, so, you know, we were we were fortunate enough to come across the EXP Realty model about four, four years ago. I'll be four years. I crushed it on their stock, by the way. Oh, you, you crushed oh, crushed it on their stock. When that when that first big, big uh, when it went up to over 100, that was incredible. Bro, the minute, I'm going to teach you all a stock lesson right now. And I learned this when I was 18 years old from a book uh, written by Peter Lynch called Beating the Street. And, and that book teaches you to like open your eyes look around and there's investment opportunities all around you. Mm-hmm. Peter Lynch tells a story about taking his daughters back to school shopping. He dropped $400 in 1988, which today would be like a grand right. at this store called the gap. Right. And he was like the minute he's like, I didn't know what the gap was, but my teenage daughters did. He went and, and bought the stock did really well. I had realtors that I knew coming into my office, asking me to help them go out and recruit agents to come to this new brokerage called EXP, and oh, by the way, that brokerage is publicly traded. Well, I've been around the block once or twice. There's your gap right there. I've been, I've been, yes, there's my gap. Well, I remember what that was like in 2007 when I watched all of my friends in real estate leave Caldwell Banker and leave Remax and go to Keller Keller Williams. Williams. I said, ding, ding, ding. I know what this looks like. Yeah, so I bought like, you know, a couple thousand shares and it did really well for me. Yeah. So yeah. shout out to EXP. <laughs> Thank you. That paid daddy. I appreciate it. Making Dustin Richard. Yeah. Um, um, but no, so so you, I, I cut you off and I apologize. No, but, but but you were saying that six years ago you went to EXP. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's it's going to be four years in February, but we probably started looking at it about five years ago. Okay. So, you know, it was it was a tough decision. So um, basically, as you know, the story started in mortgages when the market crashed, left the industry, did a bunch of stuff in marketing, entertainment, came back. Uh, to real estate, met my partner, Gil Ramos. And, you know, after about four years of, uh, you know, we were part of a franchise called Exit. And, um, you know, and Gil came to me and said, hey, let's partner up together on the next venture. But he's like, it ain't going to be this. Yeah. It's going to be something else. And uh, luckily we had somebody, you know, kind of reintroduce EXP. So a lot of times you have to be reintroduced. Yes. You know, like a lot of people hear it. They're like, I don't want to talk about that right now. But the funny part was, is that when you look back at my story, I told you I started in multi-levels at 20. 22 years old. So I understood the power of a multi-level. The reason people don't like multi-levels with network marketing is either the product that's being sold or the person selling you the product. Yes. But the actual model is brilliant depending on what the model is. But, you know, it's one of the most democratic models there is. Like I tell people all the time, I'm like, all companies are pyramid shaped, just so you know, they're all pyramid shaped. They're just some pyramids are better than others. Right. And the good pyramids let you actually surpass people above you. Right. And so when this EXP thing came around, I was like, oh my God, I'm like, these guys figured it out because they basically took what we were already doing in real estate and just supercharged it. Like they weren't telling us to sell, you know, shampoo or vitamins, right? They were saying, hey, keep selling real estate and keep recruiting. Cause guess what? That's what real estate is. It's transactions and recruiting. Always has been, always will be. If you're a broker, what do you do? You recruit. If you're a team leader, what do you do? You recruit talent. That's yeah. what you do, right? And if you're really good, you train and develop. Exactly. Yeah. And, or train and develop talent. That's what you do. But now by giving everybody the same opportunity, we saw the scalability because 
Um, I'm a firm believer that the old model real estate is dead, and it, it just it, and that's not it's not a brand thing. Like I hate when people start competing against brands. I'm like, dude, you're not a logo. Like it's just a model. It's a business model. I'm just telling you that, you know, the old mortgage models are revolving door model. You've got, you know, brokers with a lot of liability, a lot of expenses. What do they do? They recruit, recruit, recruit. People leave, leave, leave because they leave you because they want to be you, mm -hmm. right? They leave you because they say, okay, I hit this level of growth. And, you know, I, I want to start a team and I'm probably going to do it somewhere else. Or I want to become a broker. I'll probably do that somewhere else. EXP built a scalable model where everybody has the same opportunity and they all recruit. Like we talked about it earlier, I have 1,300 agents, but personally, maybe recruited 50. Okay. You know, so that's called scalability, right? In a traditional old brokerage model, if you were good enough to recruit 50, that means that next month you'll be back at 40 and then you have to recruit again. And back and why? Because you're not being able to give them the same opportunity. And when I saw that, I was like, oh my gosh, they figured it out. You know, we researched it and now four years later, um, you know, 1300 agents and growing. And, and now I'm really focused on growing the leader. So at the end of the day, the way we have success is for everybody to have the same success we have, right? And that's beautiful. If they grow, we grow. So that's what I spend my time doing is growing leaders, but I also have a, a real estate leads team as well. So, and every once in a while I'll sell property. Right now I'm selling a, a property for one of my good friends. Um, but if I'm gonna sell anything, I'll probably stick to commercial. Gotcha. You know? Yeah, no, and, and what you're doing, it sounds like, like one of my favorite books is Five Levels Leadership by John Maxwell. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's hitting that fifth level. That fifth level is when you're able to recreate yourself, mm -hmm. um, which very few get to. So kudos to you for, for taking those strides and at least being on level four. And then, you know, even right now, it sounds like you're you're trying to master level five. I want to circle back because you want me mentioning Gil. Yeah. Okay. And Gil's another name that if you're in Orlando or you're in Central Florida and you're in real estate, mortgage, title, insurance, like you know the name. Right. Right. You might not know Gil. You maybe never worked with him, but you at least know the name. Was he at one point a mentor to you? And then he saw something in you and, and you guys grew together? Like, what was that dynamic like? I'm curious. Yeah, I think it's a little bit of both. Uh, you know, when I met Gil, I was probably already 36-ish okay. yeah. years old, you know? Uh, had owned multiple companies before I was an entrepreneur. I'd been, I've done real estate. I wasn't a true professional realtor, but I do a few deals a year, that kind of thing. Um, you know, but I've had a lot of business partners, whether it's mortgage uh, or real estate over my life. And what I find that is like, you know, I think there's, there's always like a teaching element. And then there's like each person got to be able to teach and elevate the other person, mm -hmm. but also gain something from the other person. Right. So the way I looked at Gil is like he had a ton more experience when it came to retail real estate and managing and operations. Right. And then I came in and kind of I wasn't like, oh, I've never done business before. I, I kind of knew the game, but I definitely had to learn the ins and outs of retail real estate. And I learned that through and with Gil. And then, you know, I think I, I brought a lot, you know, uh, energy, read, energy, yeah, a, lot culture. Of, a lot of energy, some culture. Yeah. You know, our styles are very different. Um, you know, you read these books like Rocket Fuel, Visionary, Integrator. I'm, I, I like that. I'm kind of a hybrid, you know, like I'm. I'm, I'm big on processes and details. He's not, he pushes the envelope and I tend to partner with guys who push the envelope. Like, okay. Hey, well, I don't need to know all the details. Let's just kick the door down and see what's on the other side. And then we'll figure it out along the way. Um, so I think it was a little bit of both. I think I added something to his side. He added a ton to my side. And then we realized that it was a good combination as far as building culture. Now, the one thing that was funny is that we're both, Puerto me and Gil are both Puerto Rican. Okay. So we always were, I was always impressed by the fact that he understood culture really well. Um, and he understood the vibe and the energy of things because, you know, w when you build in a company, that's huge. Like I could see the energy in you, like, you know, the energy comes from the top, the culture comes from the leader, right? And what we believe in. And he always believed in like creating magical moments, making sure that we create awesome experience. He believed in personal development and coaching and culture. He's one of the first brokers that I had met that was like, I love developing people. You know, a lot of brokers you meet, they're like, oh, new agents. Oh, yeah, right. I don't want to deal with this, please. And he was like, dude, I just love developing people. I love seeing them go from here to here. And I was like, dude, I'm the same type of person, man. That's what I love to do. And that's how we kind of connected together. So here's what I love about having a podcast and being able to have a guest like you want is learning your story. Because so many people, especially younger professionals or current college students can learn from like just your story, right? Here's someone who went to a premier university with a specific degree came out, didn't know what he wanted to do. And that's okay, by the way, right? Literally guys and girls, that's okay. And then after a year realized that what he was doing was also not okay. Like that's <laughs> not okay. And said, well, let me try this. 
right? Let me try mortgage and ran at mortgage. And then look, life happens. The economy happens. Yep. Wasn't in your favor. So pushed you probably out, forced you to do a couple other things, but it never stopped you from moving forward. Never stopped you from putting one foot in front of the other. You learned early on a very valuable lesson. The number one commodity you can invest in is yourself, right? It is yourself. A buddy of mine, Brett Young, just did an event with us in Tampa. I had Brett speak for an hour. I'm actually going to have Brett speak uh, for an hour. We're going to do the same event in Orlando on probably March 2nd. And, you know, I picked it up from Brett. He's like, look, not the stock market, not Bitcoin. It's yourself. You learned that early. So you invested in yourself and you weren't afraid to pivot. And then when life happened, it brought you right back into real estate. Then you were introduced to somebody. And as an opportunist, you're like, wait a minute, there's something here. Yes. There's something here with this guy, Gil. And Gil probably looked at you and said, there's something here in this guy, Bobby. And then collectively, y'all started growing together to get where you are now. It wasn't intentional at 23. Right. What was intentional is I'm going to invest in myself. I'm going to read these books. I'm going to attend these seminars. I'm going to continue to to grind, continue to put one foot in front of the other, mm -hmm. continue to be a good person and also not be happy with who I was yesterday. To get where you are now as Coach Bobby Franchise, who Coach Bobby Franchise is like, yeah, Yes, I sell real estate. Yes, I invest in real estate. Prefer commercial, right? Mm -hmm. Bigger numbers, more commas, more opportunity. Mm -hmm. But your passion, it sounds like, is training and development. Your passion is finding you 10 or 20 years ago. Right. And trying to expedite that person's learning. Sure. So this is what I want you to do for me, if it's okay. Yeah. I want you to share with the audience, those who are tuned in on YouTube, or even those who are listening on Spotify or Stitcher or... Where else do you listen to podcasts? Pandora, <laughs> Google, Apple Podcasts is probably my, my favorite place. Talk about this football analogy that you have for 2023. Walk us, spend five minutes just walking sure. us through, giving us a little bit of Coach Bobby franchise. So, so you know, as you mentioned at the beginning, I spoke on stage. And the way I started that speech was... By that, the way, impromptu. This was not planned. So, no, well... Call, I, call, I, call it out from the audience. <laughs> well, uh, uh, to be truthful, okay. <laughs> I okay. knew it was coming. Okay. But, but what I said was, there's no such thing as down markets, only down mindsets. And what's happening right now is that, you know, I'm basically going back in time to talk. If you guys are listening right now, I'm going back in time to talk to you that 27 year old Bobby who was just going into that market crash from before. And you'll hear a lot of negativity, all these different things, but it's not a down market. It's what I call the champion shift, right? Instead of championship, champion shift, because this is where champions are made. What happened to me was, is I was too young and I thought markets just went up forever, right? And markets don't go like that, they go in cycles, right? But this is the part of the cycle where the champions are made because this is the part where a lot of people who aren't ready, prepared, or anticipating, they cut and run, which means there's a ton more opportunity out there. On top of that, it's volatile. It's volatile times, but guess what? Volatility is how wealth is built, right? You know, some people got hit in that last champion shift, right? Including myself, right? Lost house, car, all sorts of stuff, right? but that's because I wasn't prepared. But some people got massively wealthy because this is the time. You know, you, you always hear, you gotta you know, buy low, sell high. Well, guess what? We're gonna have that opportunity again. And as I mentioned before, I'm, I'm part of a mastermind group. And it's funny because, you know, he's a real estate investor and he says, do you know what the number one principle of real estate investment is? And you know, people say, you know, whatever, capital, you gotta have that money to make money, whatever. He goes, it's timing. Mm -hmm. You gotta know when to get in and you gotta know when to get out. Guess what? Here's the deal. That EXP stock you bought, you got in at the right time, but you also got out at the right time. I did. Because it goes in cycles and waves mm -hmm. as, as, business grow, as businesses grow. So timing is how you build a real wealth. So what I'm telling agents, what I'm telling loan officers, what I'm telling everybody is, is stop listening to all the negative talk and realize that this is the time to get creative about your business. This is a time to look for opportunity everywhere. I call it running towards daylight. Look, some doors are going to shut but there's going to be so many other opportunities for you get to get out in the game. What I said on stage for, for agents in particular, it's like, dude, I've never seen a time when it's the best time for every kind of client for you to work with them. Right. I said, it's investor season. Why? Cause investors are going to start flooding the market. So learn how to work with investors, learn how to be an investor. I told them it's going to, it's seller season. Why? Guess what? They can't slap up that crappy picture anymore and get 20 offers. Now you have to be a great professional agent and help them sell because that Fis last year they were putting it up on you know Fizbo and they were still getting offers right they're not getting those offers anymore 
buyers, buyer season. They got power again. Buyers don't have to compete against 20 offers. Now you can go in there and not only get the deal, but ask for stuff. Yes. <laughs> now you can get your closing costs covered. Now you can go to Dustin and say, hey, man, I want to get my, my, my interest rate bought down to a five. Great. Let's get the seller to pay for it. Right? Like all those things. And my favorite, as I said on stage, was builder season because, you know, there are some builders, we're not mentioning names, but, you know, they, they decided they didn't need, need realtors. So they stopped paying us our normal commissions. They cut our commissions sometimes by 75%. Uh, because they're like, people are just come knocking on the door. But guess what? Nationwide, builder cancellations are up 26%. And now I'm getting phone calls. Like, hey, Bobby, just want to let you know, we're offering 4% plus exactly. a $5,000 bonus exactly. and all this stuff. So find the opportunities during this time. The, the reality is, is when things are good, you don't get creative. And you don't build those new income pillars. And now is the time. This is a championship. And this is a time for you to become a champion. And if you stick with it, you're going to catch the next good wave. And you're going to rake it in. Perfect example, Dustin, is the refi wave. Think about this, right? If you had done all the right things before rates dropped to two, meaning you were building relationships, you were building systems, you had your CRM ready, you had market share, you had all this kind of stuff, right? You had business going. Even when it was rough, you stuck with it and you built it. Guess what? You were prepared when rates, rates dropped to 2% and everybody and their mom was refinancing. I knew people making a million dollars a year just on refis. Yep. But you can't catch that wave when it's good. You do it right now during the championship. 1,000%. I love that championship. And uh, I use the football terminology a lot uh, on this podcast, but even in my, my coaching groups when I'm, when I'm coaching business professionals outside of the podcast, or even outside of my, my mortgage business, and it's take what the defense has given you, mm -hmm. right? Like I may run a certain offense, and that offense is not about running 31 dive, which, by the way, is running the ball to the middle. Okay, Bobby yeah. and I speak 31 dive, but um, it, it's boring. Yes. It is boring and honestly it becomes painful. Yes. Right? Because you're getting hit and and you're getting hit over and over again. But you're getting three and a half, four yards. You're getting three and a half, four yards. If that's what the defense is giving you, if you can't throw, if you can't run outside, then you run 31 dive. Right. Because that's what is what works until you wear down the defense. Right. Once the defense is worn down, now I can throw on them. Now I can run outside. Right. In business and in life, we gotta take what the defense is giving you. You introduce me to a new one, which is run to daylight. Yeah. So running to daylight is something you do when you're on offense, preferably when you're running back. And by the way, this is American football. I'm sorry. It's a game I know really well. <laughs> Next to probably baseball. Those are the two sports. I do not me know too. the worldwide phenomenon known as football very right. well. I yeah. know there's kickers and goalies. Right. That's right. what I know about, about, <laughs> about soccer. Um, but running to daylight is awesome, right? It's, it's you saying, hey, look, I know I was supposed to run – to the to the eight hole, right. right, which is right 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 offside the the tackle, right. But man, there's three defenders there, right. So I'm either going to have to cut it up inside, right, or I'm going to have to continue to bounce it outside in hopes that I can get to daylight before the defender gets gets there. Exactly. If not, you get run out of bounds and you live to see another day. Exactly. So running to daylight's another sports terminology that way we can utilize to say, look, what we're getting at is you continue to play the game, you continue to get in the huddle, you continue right. to give it your full effort. Because if you don't, then when daylight does present, when the, you're not there. Right. Or when when the defense, if you're not continuous to go, the defense can't get worn down. Right. Right. And, and you can't do it. So I, I love all this. Yeah. This is the time for lenders. Someone asked me last year, oh, Dio, I don't know if I want to get in the mortgage business. I said, why? Because it's a terrible year. I said, this is the best year. The worst year to get in was 2020. The right. best year was to get in is 2022. 2023 will be easier than 2022. But those that got in in 2022, they had to get good or they had to get gone. Right. Which is what I love. They're prepared. And, and you know, the three, the three sports analogies I used when I spoke on stage was, you know, first watch your blind side. So, and what I meant by that was, is you can't pretend things aren't happening. You know, the, when a quarterback drops back to pass, the side he, he's not looking at, they call it the blind side. But the one thing he can't do is pretend that there's not a monster coming to kill him. Right. So the best quarterbacks, what do they do? They step up. They step up in the pocket, right? But they don't pretend that there's not a guy chasing them. The terrible quarterbacks, they hesitate. And they're like, oh, I got all day in the pocket. I'm fine. I'm just going to sit here and shuffle my feet. And guess what? They get smacked. So number one is stop pretending that there's not a championship happening because you're going to miss it. You're going to miss the opportunity. The second one was run towards daylight. Like you said, you know, we drop plays on a chalkboard. They look perfect. Draw an arrow. <laughs> the, the running back's supposed to yeah. go this way. But the reality is that's not how life works. Most of the time, bodies move and shift. Things shift. And doors close, but if the best running backs, what do they do? They look for daylight and they pivot, right? And then the last one that I mentioned was go pro. 
This is the time right now that if you were dabbling in the business, if you were a loan officer, if you're a real estate agent, even if you're new, is like, I see so many people dating the game. They're just dabbling. You're not going to dabble your way to success. Like go full in. What does that mean? That means you talk, you talk to DO, tell me every single program that's out there that I can make a deal work with. Learn the programs, learn the angles, learn everything you can about the real estate game and stop dating the game because you're not going to be successful. But, but right now I told you all the seasons that it is, all those people need a professional. They need somebody who actually knows what they're doing. So study the game, go to the seminars, go to the courses, you know, listen to the podcast, do all that stuff so that you're not just like, you know, I, I, I never understood why an agent would run across something during a deal that they didn't understand and not learn it for the next deal. Yeah. Right. Like that's what, you know, deals are like a college education. You know what I mean? Like there's so many little things that you can take into the next deal. But if you are committed to learning the game, I love that uh, analogy of dating the game. Cause I mean, I've done podcast episodes on this is not a part-time job, right? Right. Quit treating it like it is. But I, I'm, I like you through coaching and speaking and trying to motivate people or inspire them. It's like, how do I use words to resonate, to make an impact, to pierce that armor that they've, that they've put up. And I started asking people like your, your turn on you of date the game. What if your kid's teacher was part-time, right? What if your, your kid's principal, what if, what if the, the nurse at the pediatrician was just dating that profession? Ah, I don't really care to go all in. I don't even know <laughs> everything about, you know, how this medication may or may not impact the welfare of this child. Right. I don't really need to like understand this topic that I'm being paid to teach. Nah, I'm just going to date it. No, we would never allow that to happen. That's right. Then I look at those people's work schedules, right? And it could be the lineman who keeps your power going. It could be the police officer, the, the, the nurse, the teacher. What if you allow them to work your schedule? What would that look like? Cause I'm a big person. You get up every morning, you put on your uniform and you go to work. That's right. Because that's what you, you expect out of your kid's teacher, out of your kid's nurse, out of the bus driver that, that may get you around town or the bus driver who may get, who may get your kid to school and back right. to the delivery truck driver, to the bartender, to the, your favorite. I mean, why do we, whether it's financial advisors, life insurance, salespeople, realtors, both on commercial and, and residential, mortgage lenders, title reps, insurance agents, why do we give ourselves some kind of a, a, a free pass that we are not willing to give everyone else? Right. Because they're dating it. Quit dating your profession. Yep. Get committed and go all in. You talked about the blind side. By the way, one of my favorite movies, Sandra Bullock. Um, I may have a crush on her, so that may be a reason that I like there. watching it. And it's football. So I'm like, wait a minute, Sandra Bullock and football, I'm in. And a feel-good story, you got to watch it. And in, in that movie is about, you know, Michael Orr, who, you know, in many ways had to protect the blind side. Both right. the quarterback and that family protected his blind side, and he protected their blind side. But no, JC and I about a year, year and a half ago did a show called uh, Protect Your Flank. Mm. And we did that because I went through a leadership course where I had the luxury of going to Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. And I did a three day leadership summit taught on the battle of Gettysburg, mm. which I later learned that's the one battle that is still taught at every um, military academy. So West Point, Naval Academy, Air Force Academy, every great leader has to learn the lessons of that particular battle. And one of it is protecting your left flank, right? Mm. It's, it's protecting your flank, which for you is, is protecting your blind side. Right. So no, it's, it's, it's really awesome. Let's do this for, for time's sake. What is something that you are teaching today to others, right? Whether it's nieces, nephews, whether it's um, kids of your own or the people you coach, primarily because you're like, I wish that was taught to me, but it wasn't. Right. Um, I mentioned some of it earlier, which is, you know, becoming addicted to personal development. I think the sooner you start that, the better. Um, that said, if I was talking to somebody younger, the one thing I say is like, look, if I if I could come back and speak to 22 year old Bobby, what I would tell them is play the long game. You know, when you're younger, you think a year is a long time, right? You don't you don't spend enough time on something to get it to take, right? You just kind of hop from thing to thing, right? And uh, it's funny we went at a Tony Robbins event. Uh, there was this guy named Keith Cunningham, and he he met, he was a country he's a country bumpkin, right? And he's just like he had this line, and he's like. Get in line and stay in line. Because what we do is, is it's like the highway. I'm looking, I'm literally looking at the highway right, right behind you right now, right? And you know, you ever stuck in traffic and you think that switching to this other lane is going to get you there faster and what happens to that lane? 
yeah. you get backed up again. And then suddenly that lane that you were in, people keep moving forward, right? And what he was saying is, is like, look, find that thing and stick with it. Because even though you think you're not moving fast, you're getting closer and closer and closer to the front of that line instead of switching from thing to thing. And what I find is, is that younger folks, you know, they, you know, including myself, think that years a long time. But, you know, you overestimate what you can do in a year and you drastically underestimate what you can do in 10. So if I was 22, I'd say, Bobby, start thinking in 10 year terms or five year terms, at least, instead of thinking that. You're supposed to be rich in two years. I love it. You know what I mean? Because that's that's when you make mistakes. That's when you leave good things. That's when you don't really understand the kind of work ethic. The reality is the reason that most real estate agents aren't doing well is because they don't realize they're an entrepreneur. They still have an employee mindset and they're trying to bring that into entrepreneurship. Or they think, hey, I'm my own boss, so now I don't have to wake up. So then they don't do well, right? And what do they do? They go back to a job and they're willing to de dedicate eight hours a day to that job. Right. Isn't that ba it's baffling? Right. It happens. It happens with anything that's hundred percent commission. I'm mean, not talking to my friends over at Northwestern Mutual when it comes to life insurance. Talk to my friends at Morgan Stanley when it comes to personal uh, finance, right? Financial advisors. You at EXP with with residential realty. My buddy Aaron at Jones Lang LaSalle for commercial realty. Yep. Us here in the mortgage industry. Like it's across the board. You it's know what like, it is? Get, you put on what, your uniform and go to work. You it's know what, that easy. You know what it is? Is because real estate is a faith driven sport and there's no guarantees, right? Mm -hmm. So you're willing to spend eight hours, make drastically less, get underpaid if you know that a check's coming in two weeks. The thing with real estate is that it's a faith-driven sport. It does work, but you have to have enough faith and you have to take the action behind that faith for it to produce for you. And that's the reason that everybody kind of stays in that stuck stage sometimes thinking like, oh, well, am I spending it? Like, dude, you got to fight through this. The only way is through, right? You got to stick with it. You got to have faith. But guess what? Every single person I know that's stuck with it does really freaking well in real estate, no matter what the market that, cycle is. And there's a ton of them just in our Orlando office. Like I'm just, I, you know, I we do something called the Rockstar Lunch every month. And I went this week where, you know, we honor the, you know, the top buyer side, top seller side, top sponsoring agents. Uh, we have a, a mentorship program where they graduate and we all go to this great lunch together. And, and every time I go, I'm just so impressed by the caliber of people we have you know, and what they're doing. And they're not just doing real estate. They're investing in Airbnbs. They're investing in new businesses. They're growing wealth because that's what we teach. Yeah. You know, I believe that real estate is a tool to create wealth. I believe real estate is a tool to become the person you desire to be. It's just a tool. You know, it's how you use it. It's not just about making money. It's interesting. You saying that you believe that real estate is a tool to generate wealth. Like that is my passion is teaching people like, and it's, by the way, it's statistics, it's numbers. It's like, like, don't listen to me. Let me show you the numbers because numbers don't lie. But it's something crazy like homeowners are 40 times right. more wealthy than non-homeowners. Right. Right. You look at at, at the, the net worth of a non-homeowner versus the net worth of a, of a homeowner. It's like 100x difference. It's like 3,000 versus 300,000. And I just did a thing for 120 UCF young alumni. Right. So these are people between age 24 and probably 34, all graduated from my alma mater. And they're all interested in, in buying a home. And the questions I got sometimes were a little bit baffling, disheartening, but then it reminded me, hey, that's why you're on, like that, that's your cause. The questions were, well, gosh, I don't have 20% to put down. I'm like, are you serious? I thought we have definitely debunked <laughs> that myth. You do not need 20% down, but someone asked that question. But this is one that really like opened my, my eyes to what maybe guys like you and I, or people who, who follow us or listen to us or coach by us can, can do. This young lady goes, well, I should probably pay off my student loans before I buy a house. And I had to find a way to professionally take a step back, take a deep breath and tell her that's the worst thing she could do. And I had to say that you'll probably only be able to buy uh, pay off your student loans if you buy a house. And she was like, huh? I go, Let me walk you through it really quickly because we have 120 people on in only an hour. But there's other people who probably don't have the balls that she had to ask this question. I go. If you can afford the mortgage payment, you can afford your car payment, you can afford your car insurance, your lifestyle, you can afford rent. And if rent was give or take within a few hundred dollars of your mortgage payment, if you could afford your mortgage payment in three, four or five years, you're going to amass 30, 40, $50,000 of equity, right? Like this isn't like 2020, 2021 equity. This is like, no, you're paying down your, your loan by five grand a year. Your home's appreciating by two and a half to three and a half percent per year. Right. In just five years, you have fifty, sixty thousand dollars of equity on an investment that maybe cost you ten grand. That was your down payment. Because as Bobby just said, it's a buyer's market. 
So sellers are going to pay your closing costs. Right. So you put 10 grand up of your own money. You paid virtually roughly around what you're paying in rent. You afforded all your other payments. But now five years later, you can tap into that equity to pay off that student loan that had you not done so, there's no way in hell she was paying off $50,000 of student loan payments in the next five years. Right. Just saving it up. Yeah. But in her mind, she's like, oh, I got to pay off my student loans. And I'm like, no. That's the power of home ownership. That's right. The power of the wealth you generate through home ownership is just that and, if you have time. Yep. If you have time. And and then the other thing that I was teaching my team this week, and and you know, some people knew, some people don't, but sometimes, like you said, we kind of get baffled by this. It's if it's your primary residence and you own it for two years, it's tax free money. Yes. Like it's not just she got that's a clean fifty grand that yes. she got without taxes getting taken out of it that she's using to pay off. And that to me is incredible. You know, I believe it's two hundred and fifty thousand dollars for an individual, it is half a million for for a couple. And and I don't think people really understand that, that, you know, a lot of people are like, well, your primary residence is not a good investment. Like I always say, you know, it just depends on some people have to buy in a certain location for a reason. Like I've been lucky. I'm, you know, I don't have a wife and kids, so I buy in the edge of growth and then let the growth come to me. And then I get this equity, but it's a primary residence, which means as long as I own it for two years, I'm cashing out that tax free. Yeah. And people just don't even know that. They don't even know the power of that. Like Uncle Sam would have taken 30 percent or whatever, yep. that, you know, yep. and you get it tax free. No, it's, it's phenomenal. And, um, you know, everything that, that you're spitting, I love having, and this is honestly why I, like I saw you once. I'm like, I gotta have them on. I gotta have them on because sometimes they're tired of hearing me say it. Right. And now they get to listen to, to you say it. And then obviously to, to, to be able to learn from each other and yeah, I'm going to swipe and adapt some, some of what you shared today, especially sure. when it comes to dating, you know, <laughs> Hey, quit dating your profession right. or like, Hey, let's run to daylight. Yes. Um, we have to keep our eyes open though. Um, so I, I've absolutely loved having you on If People want to get a hold of you, Bobby, what's the best way to get a hold of coach Bobby franchise. So, um, I would love to work with, you know, agents that want to take their business to the next level or even new agents that have a fire for, you know, building their uh, real estate business. So just go to connectwithbobby.com. You know, um, that's where you can just book a direct call into my calendar with me. So um, if you're in real estate or just getting into real estate or or been in real estate and are looking for what the next level is, I'd just love to have a chat with you. You know, like I'm, I'm on like a no agendas kind of guy. It's like, I'm like you, man. I just want to get your story and see if we're a good fit for each other. So connect with bobby.com. And is your coaching right now primarily for residential real estate agents? Or are you opening up to other entrepreneurs or even mortgage loan originators? So uh, that's a great question. Um, I, I'm going to I'm gonna be opening it up more and more okay. uh, this year. I was actually thinking about kind of uh, doing more commercial coaching because, you know, I find that a lot of brokerages discourage their residential agents from doing commercial. And I don't believe that's right. I think that, you know, if you can learn something, then you should be able to do it, you know. And so um, bringing in some of my top commercial players to teach uh, different seminars, including myself and just, te you know, I have a class, you know, it's basically commercial basics for residential agents, you know, and start getting into that game as well. Because, you know, I, I kind of started that movement a few years back and now we've got about, you know, 10, 15 agents in our office that primarily do commercial when there was none when I when I started because they've got the confidence that they needed and now they're crushing it. Awesome. How about following you? IG, yeah, Facebook, the what's best, your preference? The, the, uh, IG right now, man. Okay. Just, cr just crushing on Instagram. So Bobby Franchise, uh, look me up um, on Instagram on under Bobby Franchise and you'll see my uh, Coach Bobby Franchise. Uh, I got I got reels upon reels of coaching material there and you can also see my website to connect with me there too. Very cool. Bobby, thank you so much it's for pleasure. coming on to be a guest of the Lone Officer Podcast. He is Coach Bobby Franchise. I am Dustin Owen. You have tuned in to Lone Officer Podcast. That is all the time we have for you today, but we will catch you in the next episode. Peace.